Hello everyone, my name is Zhong Yuyin. Um, feel free to call me Alex. And I'll be presenting a good algorithm does not steal, it imitates the originality report as a means of measuring when a user generation algorithm copies too much, which is joint work with my supervisors, uh, Federico Rubin, Susan Stepney, and Tom Collins. Firstly, I would like to begin with the background of this work, including a general introduction of automatic music generation, the corresponding issue, music plagiarism, and the data representation as a preliminary to the later description. Then I will demonstrate the method we use to assess the originality of music excerpts, the models we use to conduct the experiment and evaluate the results from the experiments. Finally, I will end up with the conclusion. Um, there are various approaches to automatic music generation in chronological order. Music Dice Game is a very early example where a piece of music can be formed by randomly and consecutively selecting from a, from a set of phrases that are uh, prepared in advance. Rule-based approaches, as also known as expert system, impose a collection of rules or constraints which are normally produced by expertise and uh, empirical knowledges. An expert system can generate music by constantly assess the current notes have been generated with the constraints and then decide what to generate next. Regarding more recent research, a typical example of sequential model is Markov model. It consists of state space, um, initial state distribution and uh, transition probabilities, allowing music generated by going through a series of transitions. Deep learning highlights its superiority in many tasks. Uh, it enables automatic extraction of non-trivial features and learns the connections that are hidden in the data. Models tend to be data-driven nowadays and we notice several issues surrounding them. The ethical issue of AI have been drawing more attention recently. AI-based technology has been increasingly involved in music production, but the relevant music copyright laws are still waiting to be completed. Specifically for the development of music generation models, the evaluation method also seems to be narrow. A user of music transformer algorithm, which will be discussed later, found it composes note by note music of well-known classical melodies and claim there is a needed way to prevent the model from stealing. To give a general feel of, to, of the extent to which uh, models can copy from data set, well, here is a pair of example. I will firstly play the original four note motif of Carol of the Bells, composed by, by Mykola Leontovich in 1914. And then I will play a 10 bar excerpts that we found in the Magenta published Listen to Transformer radio. As you may notice, the motif of the generated one is the same with the original one. Although it varies from the rhythm and harmony, we still infer they come from the training data. Based on the data type of uh, input and output, uh, music generation models can be uh, generally classified into symbolic or audio domain. In symbolic domain, sound objects are represented by a symbolization system like step notations and the piano roll based notations. In audio domain, sound objects are represented by row audio. Here we only focus on the symbolic domain as shown on the left. Um, the, music, the musical notes in step notations can be represented by the presence of gray bars in piano roll below um, with pitch and on-time access. The same piece of data can be further processed into a set of points, 
where each entry contains the on time, MIDI note number, morphetic pitch number, and duration corresponding to the same notes on the left. We utilize this geometric representation to calculate the cardinality score later. Music generation models often use different types of data representation. Um, for music transformer, uh, which will be discussed, discussed later, it decomposes the note points into a sequence of note events. By going through the time axis from left to right, it begins with the note on the note on events for the first two for, for the first two notes, and then shift the time with the duration of the shorter note reaches the nearest um, nearest note of events. By applying the same principle, we can get the sequence of note events for the same piece on left. In contrast. Uh, a Markov model-based music generation model, Maya Markov, uses a similar representation with a set of points. Each entry here represents the state um, extract from the left piece with a unit of beats. Thus, each entry firstly contains the beat location and the relative pitch number on the beat. The model implementation of both Mills Transformer and Maya Markov will be discussed later. Carry on with the uh, point set representation. Here I introduce cardinality score that we use to measure the similarity between two excerpts. Firstly, we map nodes uh, with pitch and on time into two dimensional space, which produce two sets of points um, denoted as target R and query Q. For visualization purpose, uh, the, the background color here is only used to distinguish the first and second bar. According to the equation above, by searching the tra translation vector T, we can maximally find 18 points or nodes in Q that overlapped with, point, with points in R. And divided by the max size between two sets of points, we can get a cardinality score of 0 0.346. And what, what if we want to check the originality level of a corpus against another corpus? The whole process starts with the uh, query corpus, where we can sample multiple pieces to get Q1 to Qn. As each piece uh, here, we can um, as as each piece here can have um, various length. We slice them into shorter ex excerpts with a fixed window size of 16 bits or four bars with four four time signature. We also allow eight bit overlap with when when slicing. And then we can calculate the cardinality score of each excerpt uh, with the target corpus and retain the max cardinality score found as CS1 to CSN below. The main advantage of doing this is that we can analyze the change of similarity or opposingly the originality through the progression of the whole piece. Then we obtain the mean value of the list of cardinality scores, which for now represents the similarity between two corpus. So we subtract the mean value from one to get the originality score for, uh, for this pair of um, query and the target corpus. To prepare the data set and the baseline for the experiment, we collected a reasonably large amount of MIDI files for music pieces in classical era. And then we filtered out unwanted pieces uh, with conditions of string quartets that composed by Hayden, Mozart, and Beethoven, first movement and fast tempo. It results of total 71 pieces as an outcome of filtering. In terms of, in terms of data split, seven of them were pseudo-randomly selected to form the query corpus, which is supposed to cover various key signatures and the composers to reflect overall distribution. Uh, as we aim to investigate the originality level of human composed music so that we can use it as a baseline to compare with the originality of model generated output, we then applied the the previous process to calculating originality score with 50 sample size and four bars window size, and eventually get the mean value of 0 0.699 with um, 0.95 confidence interval of 
0.672 and 0.725. This could imply composers wrote music that was 69.9% original, at least among the pieces we collected. Next, we implement two music, gener two music generation models. The first one is music transformer, which is deep learning based, adapting the multi-header self-attention mechanism of transformer model to capture long-term dependencies um, of node events. The second model is my Markov. It is based on a Markov model by Litro, applying additional uh, pattern discovery and inheritance to enable or guarantee the generated output review repetitive structures. Both models were trained with the string quota dataset mentioned above and then generated 30 excerpts for each of them to form the query corpus. The line plot on the left shows that the change of uh, originality score along with the steps in bar. The dotted line represents the baseline obtained from human composed corpus. The blue line and the red line uh, represent the originality of my Markov and the Muse transformer respectively. As shown, my Markov lies entirely inside the interval, whereas Muse transformer drops out of the interval. Below them, we use lighter color to denote the originality score obtained by two bar window size instead of a two bar when calculating the cardinality scores. The originality scores here are low as expected because with smaller window size, it is easier to find the exact match in the target corpus. Consider, considering music transformer, we further investigate the originality changes during the model training process. On the left, we first show the loss change with epochs. At epoch three, the validation loss reaches the lowest point where we can obtain the best version of the model based on the conventional stopping criteria. Then looking at the right side, we use sine and brown lines to denote the mean value of originality score against train and validation sets. And then use lighter color to represent the minimum value of originality score. Then um, the originality level starting, starts going down since the beginning. For training sets, it drops out of baseline interval since epoch one. And after epoch three, it tends to be, it tends to remain in, uh, remain in a certain level, but it does not necessarily mean the generated output are in the same quality across these later epochs. So we would like to assess the worst case examples next. The worst case of my Markov generated excerpts produce 0.429 originality score compared with the right-hand side Beethoven string quartet. Let's listen to these two excerpts. Firstly, the generated one. And secondly, the original one. My Markov learns the transition probabilities between states, which encode a note or a chord in bit level. As a result, we can see here, the copy mainly stem, stems from referring consecutive chords. This one shows the excerpts generated by the best checkpoint of music transformer. As we can see here, the model in the early stage tends to learn the pattern with less distinctiveness, such as a single note repetition. Repetition. Again, let's first listen to the generated one. And secondly, the original one. As mentioned, transformer models utilize the multi-head attention mechanism. It tries to learn the weighted correlations between nodes or precisely the node events. 
And in this stage, we found the model generated output oftentimes is either too random, which produce high originalities, or repeating a single note, which produce low originality. Moreover, the, the, the generation quality in both ways is low. And then in a later training stage, the model is overfit and produces the near exact copy from the training set. Let's listen to those two excerpts. Firstly, the generated, the generated one. And secondly, the, the original one. We infer from the basis musicological interpretations that the results generated by Muse Transformer gradually morph during the training process from reproduction of simple patterns to verbatim use of more distinctive uh, sequences. Now here we come to the conclusion. So far we put forward the notion that AI for Muse generation should result in outputs that imitate instead of merely uh, copying original pieces and highlights that the checks of whether it is the case are often omitted. So what do those uh, phenomena imply? Deep learning model gradually copies increasingly distinctive chunks from pieces in a training set, calling into question whether it really learns to generate or whether it has been done by a creative behavior. Using the conventional stopping criteria for the training process, the best model not only has a low level of originality, but also the quality of the generated excerpts is low in the sense that the same note is repeated most of the time. Going forward, the research on music generation with deep learning needs to reconsider in what situations the conventional stopping criteria are appropriate. Perhaps loss and accuracy should no longer be the only criteria when evaluating the model, because we need to prevent this model copying training data, especially when they are used in increasingly in a black box manner by practicing musicians. We introduced the methodology of the originality report for baselining and evaluating the extent to which a generative model copies from training data. By substituting in different similarity metrics, it will be possible to adapt the methodology to have emphasized on different music dimensions. But here we take a relative straightforward note counting approach based on the cardinality score. The calculation of cardinality score is not robust when dealing with musical data carrying subtle variations such as expressive timing that is included in the Maestro dataset. And as I've mentioned in the worst case example, cardinality score is unable to show distinctiveness of excerpts, although the cardinality score share common general advantages of uh, geometric approaches compared to sequential approach. But in its current use, it is not able to take into account the distinctiveness of excerpts being compared for instance, for instance, the, the first two excerpts used to demonstrate the calculation of cardinality score indicated an instance of similarity between Mozart and, and Hayden. But when we take into account how many classical pieces end in this way, it is not particularly distinctive or interesting example. We are also aware of the size of the training data set we used is smaller than the maestro data set from the original paper. Although our data set already contains enough amount for a music student to learn about string quartets, so we consider it, a, it is a limitation of deep learning method instead of the method for originality evaluation. In terms of future work, we would like to address the discussed limitation of cardinality score and make it compatible with a wider range of styles and capture more properties of originality or even creativity. We also would like to see how the originality report method 
can be embedded into model training process and benefit the generation performance. Meanwhile, we will need to ensure that this criteria can still maintain the generalizability asserted by standard stopping criteria. Loss function engineering is a topic addressing in recent in recent novel generating strategies to further investigate the problem that we have identified of language language based deep learning methods appearing to be little more than powerful memorizers it should be possible to merge high or low originality score as a rewards or penalties in in training loss and thank you for attending my presentation this is the this is the end and i will answer your questions to my best Thank you, Alex, uh, and thank you for finishing on time. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we have a few minutes for questions. Again, you can use the, the chat, or if you prefer, you can raise your hand. Or you can unmute your mic and talk. Let's just give some seconds if anyone is writing. Um, I have a, a uh, what are the problems or difficulties uh, for for not using a, a bigger data set? What what was the reason for for not using a, a data set uh, with more examples? Um, yeah, actually, I think my although my data set only contains seventy one pieces, but the because we use the uh, we we first of. We only use the fast tempo, so there's many nodes in this data set, and we would able to have um, in actual uh, four thousand pieces and four thousand four thousand samples in the data set. So it's it's still reasonably a large uh, data set, and uh, the reason why we use string quartets because um, we want to limit the the data set to a center uh, a certain um style or general so when we evaluate the results it will be easier for um explaining or interpreting the phenomena or the facts okay thank you thank you